Good evening, you're watching Just the News. I'm Amitabh Balachandra. Our top story today is from Kolkata, where BJP leaders and workers have clashed with the police during their Nobona Ovision uh, protest march to the state secretariat. Now, the party's biggest, this is the party's biggest campaigns uh, since its 2021 poll defeat. Uh, the BJP held the march against the alleged corruption by the ruling Trinamool Congress. Now, roads around the 19th century iconic Howrah station became a war zone, in fact, when Kolkata police clashed uh, with the workers of the BJP. Uh, there are several leaders who were detained, like leader of opposition in Bengal Assembly, Suendu Adhikari, uh, MP Lokit Ch uh, Chatterjee, uh, senior leader Rahul Sinha and others have been detained by the police during the march. Um, in fact, leader of opposition in West Bengal, Suendu uh, Adhikari, said that uh, Chief Minister, and I quote, Mamta Banerjee has turned West Bengal into North Korea, end quote. According to the Indian Express, Kolkata councillor and former deputy mayor Meena Devi Purohit was injured after party members clashed uh, with the police. In fact, there were reports that a police vehicle was set ablaze during the protest as well. Police began firing te uh, tear gas and water cannons in a massive way to disperse the mob. Additionally, amidst all of this, train services and public transport of the metro railway is not was not functioning. In fact, uh, West Bengal police denied permission for the protest and imposed Section 144 of the CRPC that prohibits large gatherings around the Secretariat building. According to the Times of India, and this is the latest information that is in, Calcutta High Court has sought report from West Bengal Home Secretary over today's protest march. In fact, the report is uh, asked to be submitted uh, on the 19th of September by the court. The High Court also directed the police to not illegally obtain, uh, detain any person and also ensure that there is no damage to public property. Moving on from the story now to the state of Karnataka, a week after heavy rains and floods battered Bengaluru, Karnataka High Court on Monday has said that the flooding in several parts of Bengaluru last week was due to the failure of the Brihad Bengaluru Mahanagara Palike, which is a civic body of Bengaluru, to remove all encroachments on storm water drains. Now, the court has observed this, and I quote, the city of Bengaluru has faced unprecedented floods and parts of the city were inundated with rainwater. The aforesaid situation has arisen as the BBMP has failed to perform its statutory duties of removal of encroachments. End quote. In fact, the uh, bench called for immediate action after being informed that the authorities had not complied with an order issued by the court uh, on the 18th of June 2019 to remove encroachments. The bench was hearing a plea seeking rejuvenation of lakes in the city. In fact, the petitioners alleged in this particular plea, uh, plea that uh, encroachments of storm water drains is one of the main causes for flooding of low-lying areas because of rainfall. In the meantime, the BBMP has now swung into swift action of after floods were reported just a couple of days ago and they've begun an anti-encroachment drive now uh, the bbmp has identified over 700 encroachments so far a majority of them have been identified in eastern parts of bengaluru like mahadevapura bomanhali and yalahanka zones in fact uh, mahadevapura zone was one of the worst affected because of uh, floods according to ndtv karnataka revenue minister r ashok on tuesday said that all apartments built illegally on raja Kalwe or storm water drains uh, in bengaluru city will be demolished he said and i quote by next monsoon, we have to clear all pending demolitions. All apartments will be removed, as you saw in Noida. End quote. Meanwhile, in Andhra Pradesh, uh, incessant rains has led to a sharp rise in the water levels of uh, Vamsadhara, Nagavali and Bahuda rivers in Sri Kakulam. Uh, district on Tuesday. Highways and residential areas were inundated as well. Videos from the area showed cars submerged in water and people wading through knee-deep waters. Uh, in fact, Sri Kakulam uh, town received 58.8 mm rainfall by Tuesday morning. Gara Mandal uh, received the highest rainfall of 128.4 mm of rainfall. 
And some tragic news coming in from uh, Sikandarabad. Eight people died and 12 others were injured on Monday night after a fire broke out at an electric bike showroom in Sikandarabad. Now, according to ANI, uh, the fire spread to a hotel above it and several people were unconscious because of the smoke emanating from the fire. Hyderabad Police Commissioner C.V. Anand said that the authorities suspect that either the e-bike or a generator exploded and led to this place. A probe has now been initiated. A case has been registered under IPC Section 304 that is causing death by negligence, 337 among others. And reports say that all accused are currently absconding. Uh, in the meantime, the PMO has announced compensation of 2 lakh rupees to families of the deceased and 50,000 rupees to the injured. And there are reports now that are saying that uh, journalist Siddiqui Kapan uh, will continue to remain in jail as a case being probed by the Enforcement Directorate against him is still pending. Uh, this is according to prison department officials uh, who have spoken to the media. Uh, SE had, if you remember earlier on Friday, granted bail to Kapan. He has spent two years in jail. In fact, he was arrested in October 2020 while he was on his way to cover the rape and murder case in Hathras. He was booked under the UAPA among other sections. And according to uh, the Times of India, who spoke to Lucknow Jail Senior Superintendent Ashish Tiwari, he said, and I quote, once uh, he obtains bail in the ED case, he will be released, end quote. Meanwhile, data from the national health estimates showed that the government expenditure on health has in fact dropped from 1.35% of the GDP in 2017-18 to 1.28% in 2018-19. Uh, India's real gross domestic product prices in 2018-19 stood at 139.75 lakh crore rupees, a 6.1% growth from the previous year. In fact, the National Health Policy 2017 claims that government health expenditure will be 2.5% of the gross domestic product by 2025. Arunachal Pradesh government spent the highest percentage, which is about 4.5% of its GDP, on health in 2018-19. A report by the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Health has said that many lives could have been saved during India's second wave of COVID if containment strategies were implemented on time by the central government. Now, the panel in its 13th report to the Rajya Sabha said that it was disappointed in the uh, fact that the government did not anticipate the gravi gravity of this particular crisis. In fact, the second wave of COVID was between April and June 2021, when a surge of cases was reported across the country and it was driven by the Delta variant. Uh, by mid-June last year, India had reported nearly 3.73 lakh COVID-related deaths. Moving on now, the Ministry of External Affairs has confirmed that India will be hosting the G20 Leaders Summit in New Delhi on the 9th of September and the 10th of September in 2023. Now, the G20 meetings will discuss a host of issues including climate financing, global food security, energy security, green hydrogen, the fight against economic crime and multilateral reforms as well. The G20 countries comprises the European Union and 19 countries, including Argentina, Australia, Brazil, Canada, China, France, India, among others. An update on the tax raids that took place at us, cit citizens and over 600 of them and human rights activists who have said that the income tax raids last week at the offices of the Independent and Public Spirited Media Foundation, non-government and organization, Oxfam India and Think Tank Center for Policy Research were, and I quote, alarming and unfounded, end quote. Now, the signatories include activists Anjali Bharadwaj, Cedric Prakash, uh, Joyan Dayal, and several others uh, who also come from uh, several organizations, such as uh, National Alliance of People's Movements, uh, Where Are the Women, among others. Now, in a statement, they've said, and I quote, in the not too distant future will come for us, each one of us, not just for civil society or civil servants or any other group, end quote. Now, the offices of these organizations were raided on the 7th of September.
On to global news right now. Authorities in Pakistan have warned that it could take up to six months for deadly flood waters to recede in the country's hardest hit areas. Uh, this comes amid fears of increase in waterborne diseases like cholera and dengue. In fact, the death toll has now reached over 1,400 and over 33 million people were affected because of the floods. Several homes, roads, crops, railways, infrastructure, all of it was damaged. Estimate damages have now risen to $30 billion as compared to $10 billion earlier. And we leave you with one piece of good news before we wrap things up here on this bulletin. This one comes in from India. According to the 2022 edition of Financial Times Masters in Management Rankings, uh, the report says that IM Bangalore is the top business school in India and 31st globally. In fact, uh, there are other institutes also that feature in this global list. Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan's SP Jain Institute of Management and Research and their postgraduate diploma in management course has been ranked 44th globally and second in India. Five other institutes of management in India have been uh, have made it to the top 100 of this ranking. That brings us to the end of this bulletin. Thank you so much for watching. Good night.